Good morning and thank you for watching Southern Living Homestead. My name is Amanda and I live in North Carolina and today I'm going to be making coconut fig squares with homemade fig jam that I get from my fig trees. I will go over the fig jam recipe in the summer when it is fig season. I make quite a few jams and I'll go over those in other videos in August. But you can use other kind of jams in this recipe, but I'm going to be making coconut fig squares and they're really, really tasty. All right, so let's go ahead and get to it. So first we're going to go ahead and mix in all our dry ingredients in this bowl and then we're going to add the liquids on top. I'm going to need one and a half cups of flour and for this recipe I am using gluten-free King Arthur measure for measure flour and I like this one because it's gluten-free plus also there is no wheat in it at all. I know a lot of recipes, or sorry, a lot of uh, new gluten-free products are including wheat in it. So you just have to be very careful to definitely double check the ingredients that there are no wheat ingredients in it. So this one is all gluten-free. So I'm going to be using this. And again, we need one and a half cups of flour. I'm using this one. The bird feeder? Yeah. Looking some food. Squirrel is in the bird feeder. <laughs> That's what the kids are saying right now. How cute is that? We are now going to need one and a half cups of rolled oats, and I am using gluten free. And this one is all ingredients from farmers we know. I really like this one. I got this from Costco, so I'm going to be using this one. You need one and a half cups of oatmeal. All right, so now we are going to need, let's put the soy real quick. I've had this for breakfast, just as, just oatmeal. Um, you know, put some fruits on top, some brown sugar in it. It was really good. I want to try the overnight oats with it and then get those ready with like a fruit mixture. So I'm hoping to do a tutorial on that as well. All right, so we are going to need a half cup of coconut flakes. And I got this one from Walmart and it is gluten free as well. So excited about that. So we're gonna go ahead and add that into the bowl with the oatmeal and the flour. All right, half a cup. Now we're going to add a half cup of brown sugar. need one teaspoon of baking powder. You're going to need a half teaspoon of salt. To go ahead and mix all this together and I will be adding the recipe in the description box in the recipe that I am using they have um, a recipe to make a jam using figs you can use that if you find the figs at a grocery store um, and again you can substitute just using regular jam um, like a raspberry jam strawberry jam and just put that in place of the fig jam if you want to make these uh, these uh, like well, they're coconut fig uh, squares, uh, but you could um, call it coconut strawberry squares and do that instead. But anyway, so now we're gonna go ahead and mix the dry ingredients. We need three fourths cups of melted butter. In this recipe, it does call for coconut oil and I have not yet invested in coconut oil, but I have made this recipe previous times and I've always used the butter in it. So we are gonna use three fourths cups of melted butter and I'm just gonna um, add it to a measuring cup and then microwave it um, probably for like a minute, minute and a half. I'll check it at the minute mark to see if it's completely melted how I want it to be. So, just getting my butter ready. Alright, 
so I'm gonna check it in a minute. It's been a minute now in the microwave. So let's go ahead and check the consistency of it. Perfect, did not need to go another 30 seconds. And while I was waiting for that to microwave, I went ahead and pulled out the um, eight by eight baking dish that I'm gonna be using for it. And I pulled out some parchment paper because I'm gonna line it with parchment paper. I go ahead and pour that butter in. I'm gonna go ahead and set my oven to 350 degrees so that way it preheats. And it's preheating. I am adding three fourths of melted butter to the dry ingredients. Hi. My youngest is in the kitchen right now, hanging out with me while I am doing this, and he is having a little snack. It's so crazy. It's it's uh, it was really chilly this morning again, but it's supposed to be about like 70, 70 degrees today. So I'm in a sweater right now because it's it's a little chilly. And uh, I'm hoping that we have enough time today to get outside in the garden and uh, continue distributing the soil that we just got from our Walmart pickup. I think I have the location for my 100 gallon grow bags for where I want to put them. I've been watching the sun and where it's setting and, and all that and how long it's in, you know, really bright and sunny in one area. So I think we're going to finish that up today. Huh? Is your snack good? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Alright, I'm actually going to go ahead and use my hands to incorporate the rest of the ingredients a little bit better. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna go wash my hands again. I like this recipe and <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, I like it because, you know, sometimes you need something different for breakfast in the morning for the kids. And <laughs> yeah. Um, and I haven't, I did my Costco trip. I didn't get eggs from Costco because I like to watch the sales for eggs being on sale. And since I had to use up all my eggs from the fridge when my refrigerator died, so now I was like, hmm, what can I make for breakfast that does not include eggs for like, <laughs> for like a baked kind of dish? And this one, you don't have to use eggs in it. So that's so perfect that I have all the ingredients and I didn't need eggs. And for the jam that I'm going to be using in this recipe um, is a brown sugar fig jam. And it's so good. I have other fig jams in there, but this one um, I really like. And also in the recipe too, they had used figs and brown sugar in it. Is there another squirrel out there? <laughs> the kids have been excited since the, fur, the, bur, the bird feeder is back up. Uh, not just birds are coming, but squirrels are coming too. So anyways, so I'm going to go ahead and start getting this pressed into the baking dish with parchment paper. Hi. He's so happy right now. <laughs> Now this is my first time using parchment paper in this recipe because normally I just spray it and you can spray it if you don't have parchment paper. And then I just use a spatula. Yeah, you saying dad, dad. I just use a spatula to scoop it out. But I have so much parchment paper because I just bought some also from Costco and I thought I would give it a try using the parchment paper. Okay, so let's see how this goes. And this is an 8x8 eight eight again. I couldn't remember if I said that. But this is an 8x8. Eight eight. Okay, so now we're going to put about two-thirds of this mixture into here on the bottom. Is your snack? Is your snack good? You like it? 
Oh, I hear the squirrel again. I'm going to use my hand to press it in. All right, so I'm going to put a little bit more. So we need two thirds of this mixture on the bottom. So. Okay, as you can see, I have it nicely pressed in there. So I'm gonna take this and bake it in the preheated oven for 10 minutes. Set my timer for 10 minutes. And that's just the first layer. After that's done, um, baking that first layer, then we're gonna go ahead and add our jam and then the top too. Okay, so I'll come back in 10 minutes. All right, it should be almost done. The 10 minutes is up in like seven seconds, so. Oh, there it is. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out of the oven. My youngest is still hanging out with me in the kitchen in his high chair. Oh, that smells so good. All right, check it out. Okay. Okay, so I still have the oven on 350, and I'm gonna use a brown sugar fig jam that I made last year um, from Fig Season. And I'm gonna just go ahead and pour over top what like portion I want, like how much jam I want. You can go by the recipe of what they use, um, or you can just eye it out. And in this case, I'm eyeing it out. So let's go ahead and do that. Now I leave my rings on. I, you don't have to, but I do. I got kids. So, <laughs> all right. So let's go ahead and eye out what we are using. I wasn't sure if I would need two jars, one jar. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and spread that around and see where I'm at. Definitely need some more. I love these small jars for jam. Works perfect for it in the fridge and on the shelf, in my pantry. I call it the pantry number two for all my um, canning stuff. Try to keep that all in there. Hi, bud. What are you making? I'm making the coconut fig square bars. It's hot, so don't touch. You can have one later. Are messy. He's messy. Yeah. Mm. All right. One of those size for uh, jam worked. Uh, jam worked perfect for this recipe. So I actually just needed one. So and that's the smaller ones. Got the eight ounce uh, candy jars that I'm using. If that helps for when you're portioning out what jam you're using. All right, so now we're gonna use half of this and put it on top and we're gonna pat it down gently and then we'll save the remainder and then sprinkle it over top, okay? All right, so we're gonna pour over half of this on the top.
So I'm gonna go ahead and pat it down. And patting it gently. So I don't want the jam to kind of pop through. So just patting it gently on top. Okay, I need a little bit more right there. I'm just gonna pat that down. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the rest of what is in this bowl, you can see here, and then I'm just gonna dump that on top. You can dump it, you can sprinkle it. So I'm just gonna kinda evenly distribute it, distribute it throughout the top. A little chunk, I'm just gonna try to break that up. Okay, okay so now that that's done, we're gonna put this back in the oven at 350 degrees and we're gonna bake it for 20 to 25 minutes until the top is a nice golden brown. Um, so let's go ahead and get that in the oven. All right, so I'm gonna set my timer for 20 minutes. And then at the 20 minute mark, I'm gonna check it and see if it needs an additional five minutes to see if it's where I want it to be with that nice golden brown. I don't wanna over bake it. So it's kind of nice to see where it's gonna be at in the 20 minute mark. All right, so I will come back in 20 minutes. All right, it's almost been 20 minutes. The timer is about to go off very soon. It smells really good. I can't wait to see what it looks like. So <laughs> they're out there playing right now. All right, it should be ringing, ringing and beeping soon. Oh, there it is. Oh, you guys hear it too? All right, let's see how this thing looks. So it's been 20 minutes. Okay, it does look good. I think I'm gonna give it another two minutes, not five more minutes, just two minutes. I know I said 20 to 25 minutes, but let's do another two minutes. Set my timer. That way it gets that nice golden brown on top. And then we'll, once it's done, I'll let it cool. Okay, we'll get back to you in two minutes. Two minutes are almost up. <laughs> Kids are out there giggling. It's cute. <laughs> I hear that baby laugh. Oh, there it is. All right, let's check how it is. <laughs> Oh, I like the color of this. Okay, so this looks really good. All right, so I did 22 minutes on that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. I want to show you what it looks like. It's really good. I'm going to let it cool down before I remove it from the parchment paper. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut it. They're just having a great time out there laughing. I'm gonna let it cool down before I cut into it. Um, it, is, it is hot, obviously, since it just came out of the oven. <laughs> they are out there giggling, it's so cute. Anyways, um, as soon as it's cooled down, I will go ahead and um, show you guys how I'm gonna cut it, okay? All right, see you guys in a bit. Okay, so it's been an hour. I let it cool down for 30 minutes on the countertop, and then I actually put it in the fridge for 30 minutes because my son and I were ready to go ahead and try it. I know he wants to try some. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it out and cut it up. I like how that came out really easy. There are just little crumbs in there, but that came out really nice. The spatula for it. And I'm just cutting them into little squares. I probably could have let it chill a little bit longer in the fridge. Um, but yeah, I know he's been asking for it, so. That's what it looks like all cut up into little squares. Go ahead and try a little piece. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> it always turns out so good every time. It's really good. I think the I think my son will love it. <laughs> well, he's he's always loved it, but I know he'll be happy to have some. So and I think the next time I'm gonna try a different jam in it because I always use the brown sugar in it and I have some other jams in there that I've made so this was really good definitely a lot of little extra crumbles those will still be good to eat can probably put those on um some yogurt, kind of like a granola topping. They all did not fit on that plate, but look how cute they look. They are so tasty, so soft. And I am gonna use the extra crumbs um, that are on that parchment paper, and I'm gonna save it for either putting on um, a yogurt kind of like a yogurt granola topping it'll be really good thank you for watching southern living homestead i hope you enjoyed what i made today and i hope you guys have a great day say bye say bye <laughs> take care bye